Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about hydraulic fractures and we're going to start with the first topic out of this list. And we're going to see that we already have some hydraulic fractures in nature and these are called dikes. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. As you may know, uh, in the subsurface, uh, especially when we go deep into the earth, uh, we find uh, magma, which is, uh, which is a fluid. And whenever that magma is uh, pressurized at a pressure that's high enough in order to flow through the surface, it's going to open up through the earth, as you can see in this figure, and it's going to displace the rock according to the laws of mechanics that we have already seen. So this is the time in which we're going to put in place the knowledge about the state of stress, the minimum principal stress and how that affects hydraulic fractures. If you remember, a hydraulic fracture is going to propagate always perpendicular to the minimum principal stress under ideal conditions. And what that means is that this magma is not going to flow in a disordered manner, but it's going to flow according to the state of stress in a particular site. Here you have a 2D image of what this might look like in nature in this uh, simplified image, and you can see how this magma can open its way uh, through the surface. Let's try to understand a little bit better this into three dimensions, and for that I have made uh, this uh, schematic in which you can see this uh, magma which is flowing up through the surface at some point uh, it starts going up and that's called a dike and when it propagates horizontally in geology that's called a seal when it reaches the surface it's going to start to spill and according to what we have said, this dike is going to propagate like a hydraulic fracture. These are actually giant hydraulic fractures, and therefore it's going to have to be perpendicular to the minimum principal stress. For this example, I have assumed, and I hope that you can see that, that the minimum horizontal stress is in this direction. And because it is in this direction, the plane of the dike when it propagates vertically is going to be perpendicular to this stress. And what happens in these cases is that after some time when the, the dike stops uh, uh, flowing up and the magma crystallizes, the rock is going to harden. And let's imagine that we erode this layer over geological time. The result is going to be that the more resistant rock just is going to remain. In this case, this is going to be the dike. And the dike is going to, after we have that erosion, is going to look like this. This is what is going to be left after the first layer is eroded. I'm not going to go into the details uh, right now about uh, why we have uh, seals. Uh, that's something that we're going to see later. I'm just going to give you a hint over here. In this case, we might have the minimum principal stress to be the vertical stress. There is a stress rotation at this particular place, and that's why the uh, hydraulic fracture propagation it's uh, horizontal. And let me show you a very nice image about how these dikes uh, look. First of all, uh, here you have a cross section of these uh, dikes. Uh, in this case, I hope you can see that the width is increasing from the bottom uh, to the top. So that means is this dike is propagating upwards. And here, on the left, you have another image of the Sheep Rock Dike, which is in uh, New Mexico. If you ever go to New Mexico uh, and you can pass by, 
this place. I'm going to show you where it is. It's uh, right over here. And I'm going to zoom in. And also from the space, you can see the trace of these dikes. So the dike is going in this direction. So in this particular case, you may say that around this location when the dike was formed, the minimum principal stress, it might have been pointing in direction more or less east-west. Nearby, you have another dike. And it appears that at the time that this dike formed, there was not much of a stress contrast. And that's why this dike also propagated in almost perpendicular direction. And if we take a look at what that dike looks in three dimensions, here I have one video that from, from, the, from the internet. And here you can see what the, the dike looks like. So this is this magmatic wall that has been left after the, the dike eroded. So let me jump ahead to that to that time. And uh, here you see the dike on the right. Just to give you an idea, uh, this is a road over here. Here there is a car. And you can see this uh, giant wall of magmatic rock that has crystallized and it was left after this dike uh, propagated. I hope that you get an idea here about the scale about this dike, how large it is. This one is uh, a few miles long. And hopefully also this will give you an idea about what hydraulic fractures look in nature. And uh, in nature and also uh, what they, they look like when they are uh, done for completion of wells. All right, so with this video, uh, we uh, finish a short introduction to dikes. And again, I'm going to remind you that these are hydraulic fractures and are, are very useful for understanding hydraulic fractures made artificially in wells. Actually, there are several people very well known in the hydraulic fracture community that have applied the learnings of dikes and nature to the design of hydraulic fractures in engineering.